So, as a kid, I was a little weird. Um, and by that, I mean, I didn't know how to socially interact a lot of times with other kids. And I, came, I would come up with schemes. Um, one scheme, uh, when I was in kindergarten, as I was going to hang with a bunch of my sisters, my older sister's friends, was uh, that I would wear uh, a white jacket and dress like Don Johnson from Miami Vice. Sunglasses, and I would develop, I would, I would talk like this. Um, it didn't go over well, and I may have been teased. Um, another scheme I had was when we moved, first moved to Michigan, um, I was born in Chicago, we moved to Michigan, I was in kindergarten, and this was my chance, my chance to be cool. This is my moment. And I hung out with these kids, and we got on the bus, with the bus up, it was all going really well. I was a cool kid from, from the big city. Um, and, then I was, and then we were walking, and there's a fence behind my house, and it's got giant spikes on it. And I said to myself, they'll be impressed. So I said, I'm going to jump that fence. And they said, you probably shouldn't. And I said, I'm going to. And I went, and I jumped the fence, and I didn't come back down. Because the spikes went through the back of my pants, and I was just there until my pants ripped off in front of everybody. What I'm saying is I have regrets. I have regrets, um, and we all have we all have regrets. We all have things that we look back on. They're more serious than that, that we, um, we regret. And that brings me to Galatians. More so, it brings me to circumcision. Um, most of Galatians, you're wondering, how does this connect? We'll get there. Most of uh, Galatians is really about circumcision. It is about a group of people who have come in, of Jews, who are telling the people, a lot of them Gentiles in Galatia, they need to be circumcised and they need to follow the food laws. These are adults. Um, and they need to have the outward appearances of being good Jews, of um, keeping that ethnic identity, that national identity, and just joining in. And so the question that Paul is answering is, should they be circumcised? And his resounding answer and a long explanation of the reasons why is no. Now, were mistakes made? Probably. Were some Gentiles circumcised? Probably. Did people in that community convince them to do it? Probably. They had some regrets. As you can imagine, you can't take that back. Circumcision is forever. Um, and they didn't have to do it. And Paul's big issue with it Right, is that they've made the outward appearance of being a Jew, the outward appearance of the law, essential and a boundary to entering into the presence of God, of being the people of God. And Paul makes this big contrast in Galatians between life in the spirit and life in the flesh. Life in the flesh makes a big outward appearance of being good, of being holy. Um, it sets boundaries between who's acceptable and unacceptable. You look like a Christian. You don't look like a Christian. We've all been there. We've all experienced such things. I had a friend who decided he was a Christian, and he... Um, we decided to go to church for the first time. And um, he had tattoos and some earrings and things like that. And on his way out of the church service, uh, an older gentleman in the back uh, who was an usher said, uh, excuse me, son, uh, we worship Jesus here. And he said, uh, yeah, that's why I came. And he said, 
Well, it doesn't look like it. Basically, I'm telling them, you're not, you don't look right. You don't, the outward signs are not there. And maybe this isn't a place for you. Um, and, and Paul is pushing all the way through this against these boundaries. This idea that you have to visibly do the law of Israel. And what does the law do for you? It makes you Israel. It makes you, in a way, what was it used for? It, it was a boundary line between Israel and the world. It said, this is Israel. This is where God resides. We are different. We are circumcised. We are set apart. We eat differently. We do everything differently. There's no mistaking our difference. And what does life in the spirit do? It takes all those different parts all over the world and makes them one in Christ. It brings in the difference, right? And the big issue that Paul has is that they seem to be denying what Christ has done. See, Jesus Christ talks about himself being the temple. When you bring down this temple, I'll rebuild it in three days. And we know that when Jesus was crucified, the temple is the um, sheet between what would be the Spirit of God and the world is ripped open. Right? That's what it says. It's ripped, the veil. And the Spirit of God goes forward into the world. It is no longer contained within the nation of Israel, within the people of Israel, within their temple, but is now for all people. This is what Christ has done. He has sent, right? I send the Spirit to you. He has sent the Holy Spirit to the world. And Paul is more concerned with the inner life of the Spirit and what the Spirit does than with the out, outward signs of the law. The law cannot save you. Even if you fulfill it visibly, if you did every part of the law visibly, it cannot save you because it is the inner working of your heart. And more than that, it is the work of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit this very work on the cross, this very tearing the veil moment that saves you. Paul wants to make it clear. There's no thing you can do. There's no action you can take. There's no visible appearance that you can put upon yourself that can save you. There's nothing you can do that can make God love you more. There is nothing that you can do. That you are saved because Christ loves you, because he died for you, because he conquered death for you, because he has given you his Holy Spirit and the gift of faith. Right? The inward working of the Spirit. And so, these, as he calls them at times, these Judaizers, or other times he'll call them these manglers of the flesh, um, are causing disternation between the people that he has called. They're causing division because of this call to look and be a certain way. This idea that we have to do these outward things to be in. And Paul then transitions here in Galatians 6 to, no, here is the inward life. Here is what the inward life of the Spirit looks like within the community of God as contrasted with the outward circumcision, which he says they are only doing to keep up appearances. They're embarrassed. 
They're embarrassed that they're hanging out and eating with uncircumcised Gentiles. They're getting judged. They're getting comments. This, at this point, it's still considered a Jewish sect. And they want to cover their backs. They want to look good. And what he says is, no, be good. And when your brother or sister struggle, when they fall into sin, right, the contrast, say, one sin was, if your brother and sister say, when you were newer to the faith, convinced you to get circumcised as an adult. Which I think, um, as far as conflicts that could be created in the church would be a big one. Um, if they do that, you who have the spirit, restore them with gentleness. Restore the person who has come against you with gentleness. Gentleness is true strength. Weakness is when you lose control of yourself in anger. Gentleness is a work of God that allows you to forgive the person, bear with the person, stay with them, and try to bring them back to reality and to a good understanding of their faith. Right? Paul, actually throughout the letter, is not practicing gentleness. He, uh, he has many insults for them throughout this text. Many of them, there are no children here, so I guess not mixed company, but many of them are a little. He says they should finish circumcision um, on themselves, perhaps, throughout Galatians. Um, it's very aggressive. And Paul is taking the role of shepherd. Right? His job in this is to guard the flock from that which is coming in. But it's also to restore those who have been moved wayward. And you restore people through gentleness. Christ restores you through gentleness, through a gentle move of the Spirit that calls you oh so softly back in. Christ restores you with people in the church community who are willing to tell you the truth gently. And I want to make a big line between that. There are people who tell it as it is. That's not about you. That's about them. Right? And there are people who tell the truth with gentleness. Find those people. Have them in your life. People can say, ah, I don't know if this is, you know, that can bring you back in. They have the strength in the spirit to do this. And so the life in the spirit is one where we persevere together. One of the dangers, one of the biggest concerns I have for the church in America is that there are so many options. There are so many churches. You, if I try to restore you with gentleness, you could leave. You could say, I don't want to be restored. And you could go to another church. Right? It's very hard. They couldn't leave. <laughs> like, there is no other church. There was just the church in Galatia. But to be family as he talks about the household of God, right? Paul calls us the household, the family of God. To be family, you have to persevere together. You have to practice gentleness towards each other. And you have to understand that not only are you practicing gentleness towards them, they're doing the same for you. You think they're unbearable? You know... There are people that I think I'm being nice to. It turns out they're being nice to me. And that's what Paul says. Be careful in your 
helping them in a spirit in your gentleness that you don't fall into hypocrisy, that you don't become just like them, right? You don't start thinking, oh, I need to bear with them as if Christ didn't die for you in your sins. And so then the invitation by Paul is, in this text, is examine yourself. Take time to look inward. Examine your motivations. Examine why you are doing what you are doing. Right? There's a square um, that, I used to, that we did chaplain, chaplaincy training about, about what, what we know. Right? And in that square, it's imagine there's four squares inside of it. The first square is what you know about you that no one else knows. Right? This, is, this is your secret self that you are examining. The second square is what people know about you, but you don't know about yourself. In other words, there are things that people see and know about you that you are not recognizing. The next square is what you think you know about yourself, but you're wrong. Right? These are the things you think you are, but you're not. And then the other one is what people think about you, but they're wrong. What they think you are, but you're not. Um, and, and the reason I bring this up, as we talk about this kind of self-examination and gentleness and being in a community that can help correct and guide each other, is this kind of humble mind that understands, you know what? I only know a quarter. I have half of what I believe about myself is untrue. Half of what I believe myself about myself is true. Half of what that other person believes is untrue. Half of what they believe is true, and I don't know it. Right? That we need this community. And we need the Holy Spirit to be in the midst of that, to allow us to do amazing things. The amazing thing about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit through Christ does this work in us, reveals this to us, and gives us the ability when we are furiously angry at somebody to instead forgive and restore them. That is a work of God that is not a work of humanity. And it's all this work towards Christ who is making all things one, making the whole world one, making all who believe in him into this family of God. You are a family. I am part of your family. You are part of my family by the power of God, knit together because we have the spirit in us. And life of spirit looks like this. So Paul is saying, we got all these issues there's a lot of division. There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of things not to forgive each other for. Right? But we can't do that. We don't have a choice. We are family. And families persevere. Now, did Paul kick people out because of their behavior? Yes. There are boundaries. There are, there are lines you cannot cross within the community of God. But he kicked them out in order that they may be restored. As he said, give them to Satan so that they may come back. Um, so even when someone goes way too far and has to be removed, the hope and prayer is that they will be restored to God, right? And that is what Christ has done for you. And because Christ has done this amazing thing and restored you to himself and given you faith by the power of the Holy Spirit and made you his, not because of anything 
that you did, but because he simply loves you. Because he did this in you. You are family and you are called to persevere as he has done with you. And now we will turn to this meal where we will all eat from the one bread and become the one body with the one Christ, this family meal. Amen.